Now in this video uh, we're going to look at one of the uh, most important uh, fundamental principles behind programming which is looping and looping uh, if you want to write um, efficient maintainable code looping is such an important thing to be able to do um, for instance if I wanted to generate a list of numbers um, the coding that would normally have to go behind something like that is um, very repetitive, um, very manual, and not very maintainable. Um, whereas if we uh, introduce something called loops, we can make that happen really easily, and we can change code really easily. Um, so, how does it happen? Well, generally, you'll declare yourself a number variable. Now, um, we know that byte uh, will can only hold 256 different values, 0 to 255. Um, so if you want anything, if you want a loop, if you want something, some code to repeat itself more than 256 times, then you'll want to use integer instead. Uh, and remember, we're using the um, coding conventions of BT for byte there. I've also got um, a string variable there that I've declared. And looping, then, uh, four loops. We start off with the word for, and we say for BT loop equaling 1 to 10, do this line of code. And it will do it 10 times. Uh, when it gets down to uh, the next line, it just says do the next instance of BT loop. Um, so it will start off with 1. Uh, next time it gets around, it will do 2. Uh, and you get the idea until it gets up to 10. So uh, you can really appreciate um, the value of looping if we actually step through some code. So I'm going to apply my breakpoint, and I'm going to run the application. And we've hit the breakpoint, so the code has stopped. Uh, currently, BT loop uh, is set at zero. That happens when we declare the variable. Um, so if we hit F8, uh, we'll see that BT loop is now one because we're saying for BT loop equals 1 so it's starting off and it's looping through and it's using 1 the first time so what it's doing is it's setting S message to the value of BT loop and it's putting a new line in as well VB new line is as equivalent of hitting enter on your keyboard so let's F8 again till it gets to here and when it gets to next BT loop it wants to do this line of code again but for the next value for BT loop which is going to be 2 so BT loop is now 2 uh, S message is 1 still but when we hit the next line S message will now be 1 2 and that's because um, we've now appended 2 to it so we can keep looping through and you can see it changes the value each time until it gets to 10 now this time when it gets onto the next line it won't jump back up to here again because it's done all of the loop from 1 to 10 it'll get dropped down to the next box which is MSG and we've got our um, output um, and we didn't have to write 10 lines of code to do that okay we um, just needed this simple loop so we could change that to 20 here if we wanted 20 uh, as our output so let's just run a game. I'm going to take the breakpoint off this time. So we can get 20 numbers very quickly. And one of the other beauties of it is um, that we could introduce some maths. Oop. And that's just a, like a, a one or two character change to our code, and we get a completely different output. Everything is doubled there now. So loops really are amazingly useful so let's have a look at another use of loops and um, we've seen this code before in a previous video where I've used a control array so sorry uh, just a, a normal variable array where I've declared it here and I said I want four different values to be stored in this uh, byte control array and then I've used code to set the values set the elements of the control array to different values uh, but then I commented out that code because I wanted to do it more um, efficiently with 
a uh, loop. So we should step through this one and see how this one works. Because loops combined with arrays or control arrays uh, just bring around massive benefits. So if we remember the application, uh, it's taking um, four numbers and encoding them basically. Encode and it basically multiplies each number by a different number uh, to bring out a coded value at the end. So how does it do it? Using the loop. Well, let's find out. Let's put the breakpoint on. Let's put in our numbers and encode. So for BT loop equals zero to three, um, we're going to set a uh, a byte uh, variable, um, and it's an array. So uh, let's step onto the next line. It's going to set the element of that array to um, a value from the uh, text box that the, the user puts in and it wants the first value so again we're using b2 loop but we're adding one because we want the first value and that's using the mid function um, then we want to reset the uh, array element because we want to use that value but we want to times it by um, uh, four in this first in instance and the result um, that we can display in the message box at the end just down here uh, is changed and reset each time to or we append on the newest value so we could skip through all of this four times and we're referencing we're using beta loop all the time in our code to do some really um, efficient and um, eloquent coding to get our output there we go and if we change the code slightly so if we wanted it to be a 10 digit array and we just changed a number here then in theory in theory it should work for 10 digits instead now this code I uh, just need to take off a max length on the text box, I think, don't I? Let's try it. I've got an overflow, and that'll be because a value. Maybe less 